So again, we're talking about creating objects that have a certain amount of character. And um, you know, I had this student about two or three years ago, and she got super frustrated with me in the class because um, it, it got kind of boring for her. And um, I realized what was happening uh, was that um, she had a very personal approach to the way that she made art, and um, it was very um, expressive for her. And um, because we were working on sort of just technical stuff, like this object drawing stuff, she got really frustrated and really bored um, because there wasn't enough of like, there wasn't enough of her in it, basically. And um, so what we had to do was kind of like take object drawing because, you know, you still have to do the assignment, whatever, and try to make it interesting again for her. So, um, You know, one of the things that we talked about doing was like, well, how do you take like an object and inject more of yourself into it? And so what we did was um, we just drew the same object three, three times, the same size, but we approached it in sort of like three different ways, basically. So we're going to take um, this, uh, this bowling pin, draw it a couple times, and... Um, talk about different approaches you can potentially take with it to make it more interesting for you if you get bored. Okay, so we have the um, the basic layout of this thing, right? Looks somewhat bowling pinish. Okay, so um, here we've got a situation where we have um, our reflect our shadow core kind of runs down the bowling pin right here, right? We're just going to run that shadow core all the way up, and we're going to do that to both, right? So when we do this, we don't want to totally break all of the rules of drawing everything um, because we still want this object to like look dimensional and and possible but we want to um, begin to attack it and one way to attack it is with um, the mark making the mark making system that you use so, so what you can do is go ahead and mass out all the value over here right and we're not thinking about mark making systems yet. We're just thinking about how do I get this object to be dimensional, right? And so this one, I think we're going to take like a um, a curvy and flowy approach, and then this this one we're going to take a more linear. So so we're going to say like curve and flow, linear, and like maybe even harsh, right? Um, take, take like a little bit of attitude to it. So when we do like curved stuff, what we can think about doing is using a little bit of, um, like softish curved hatching. Got a little bit of shadow coming down here for the swell. primary shadow cores here. And then when we get to the shadow core, we can continue to wrap around. We can start to bump out the shadow core with our curved hatching. And then for the contour, we can come back around and we can go flowing and, and everything with the contour. So I'm staying kind of soft with this, but now I can kind of like bump it up, right? Now that I've kind of gone through, I can do get the grounding shadow down. I can pull some shadow back here if I want to. Just begin to indicate the ground and I can differentiate the ground with a deeper shadow. Then I can go in and I can start 
picking up areas of contour and sharpening them up. I can go back and now I can start thinking about like creating alternate cross hatching. Then get to the get going with the point of my um, pencil here. Here's always a, a difficult thing when you have two different directions like uh, coming here. So what I like to do is kind of evolve those marks so that they blend into each other. So this direction down is becoming this direction to the side by the time I flow around here. Um, it's just a little little transition trick you can you can potentially use or not. Um, if you don't want to use that, you can just kind of stop it and pick it up later. What I'm doing here is I'm just kind of following the form with these marks as it bends and curves around. So here, when I get up here, I have to kind of like change and follow the form like this way, right? And then I got to bend this way, right? Then curve and change this way, I'm just following those forms. So there, that's one approach. And then I can take a different approach and go kind of like linear and harsh, right? Like even to the to the buildup of the form. Um, so I can build up the form with more like harsh linear lines, right? And I can kind of do a buildup of, of tangent lines to get the contour out. And then I can do the same thing for sort of building out the mass and tone. I'm going to go ahead and build out the, the mass down here first. Build a little up here. So then I can go through and just start hatching, right? I can do straight hatching as well. And I can get as aggressive as I need to with this. Like I can like dig in and so on. And what I'm just thinking is I'm, I'm still following the form, right? I still want to follow the form. And here I can go um, a couple of directions. You can, you know, hatching itself, where you go one direction like this, gives it a feel. Cross hatching gives it another feel. And so you can kind of experiment with um, how you like to do both or any of those. And you can use both in the same image like this, as long as you're kind of obeying the value. So what I've done here is I've created the same object drawn two different ways using a really logical, like, mark making system. Um, there's lots of ways to go about this, right? Um, and like, this is part of like, what we talk about when we're talking about developing like a style. It's like, you wanna be able to shift from this style to this style, right? You could take this style over here and you could begin to evolve it even further, right? You could say, well, what if I wanted to do like a heavy black outline, right? I could say, well, Maybe where it swells in, my rule is that I have a heavy outline, and then where it swells out, I kind of morph to a thin outline, as if the, there's only so much line to go, and uh, to go around, and I have to like kind of distribute it, right? So this is kind of emphasizing with line weight, those areas where the object pinches inwards and it can be very heavy. And what's cool about this is that it can still emphasize like form and depth. And then I can, um, I could change this too. I could do like where I could get some real heavy, um, reflected light or, um, I could get some heavy shadow core on this guy. by following that contour 
right? And that can work too. And then I'll have to go in and change that mass. Right? Over here, I could say that I want like, um, maybe I want like a, a wonkier sort of approach to it, something more, um, more stylized, um, maybe more like um, flat in a way. So I could, um, I could emphasize the exterior very much evenly throughout. And when I do that, I kind of want to think about what I'm doing for both sides. So one of the interesting things about this is I'm changing my approach, right? I'm not changing the object or and I'm not like struggling over what to draw. I'm just working on, well, how do I draw it? How do I change myself? And I think that's more interesting than like figuring out what to draw or why to draw um, in a certain way is like, how can I, how can I be different? How can I change what I'm doing? Right? And you know, essentially all it is, is I'm just like coming up with a different rule set for how I'm going to make marks and how I'm going to approach an object and then executing that rule set. Um, and as you get better at this, you can just sort of change the rule set and changing the rule set changes the style. And that's all it is. It's pretty simple. So um, this is something that I want you to play around with uh, in these sort of drawing two assignments. Um, and it's going to be really valuable uh, as you leave drawing two and go to other places, being able to like approach objects differently. Um, because this this might be something like an approach that you take like if you're drawing like a TV show or something like that, um, or working in like the illustration fields, you might want to be able to like you know merge a certain amount of dimensionality with two dimensionality or whatever. Um, uh, so what I want you to do is just play around with the versatility of how you can make marks and how you can approach objects while still preserving the sort of dimensionality that you know how to create already.